And we will switch to the last speaker for this session, um, which is Professor Christoph Alexiou aus, uh, fr from Erlangen. I'm already switching to German here. <laughs> um, so, and he will uh, talk about magnetic uh, nanoparticles for targeted cancer treatment. Yeah, thank you, Jan, for this kind introduction. Um, I would like to introduce first myself. I'm working as a physician, ENT physician in Erlangen, and I do also lead the section for experimental oncology and nanomedicine. I do have in three years now the um, Elsie Kronofresenius Foundation Professorship for Nanomedicine. And uh, on this uh, stage, I would like also to thank uh, Patrick Hunzinger and Beat Leffler for, for the invitation, giving me the chance to speak here, and congratulations for this outstanding Congress now, for the sixth time, as we have heard yesterday. Now, what we are doing in Erlangen, as I mentioned before, we do synthesizing nanoparticles. Um, characterization, of course, we do uh, control them. We do make nanotoxicology, especially oxidative stress or uptake mechanisms, biodistribution, live cell imaging. We um, do biophysical mechanisms like uh, magnetism and the behavior of the particles in the bloodstream. We do uh, preclinical animal studies. There we have, I show you then, a special intervention center and angiography where we can do this now by our own. And uh, uh, we are very lucky because since one year now, one and a half year, we do have now a gene pre-production unit in our pharmacy uh, where we can produce a nanoparticle on the GMP level. This is necessary, I think this circle is necessary to do what we all want to do, therapy studies in human patients. Now, we do focus in our section on iron oxide nanoparticles, magnetic nanoparticles, and as you all know, they are used already for biomagnetic cell separation and also as contrast agent in MRI. There was a nice study presented in the New England Journal of Medicine from Harishin Hani and co-workers from Boston where they did use uh, magnetic nanoparticles, CINIREM, to detect lymph nodes in patients suffering, for cancer, uh, suffering from prostate cancer, and they could detect 90.5 of the malignant metastasis before treatment, and this is a really very huge number of detection before treatment. This is necessary, especially in this tumor entity, because if a surgeon, and I'm doing also surgery, knows in advance what lymph nodes might be or are uh, malignant, then you can um, plan your surgery procedure and you can lower it or extend it. And if you do have to expand the surgery due to the lymph node metastasis, uh, adverse side effects like in prostate cancer, incontinentia or impotentia, they are main risk. And so therefore this is very, um, very important to know this information in advance. Now, what we are doing now, we do, as I mentioned before, synthesizing nanoparticles. They are coated with, uh, in this term, fatty acids, and uh, their mitosendron, a well-known um, chemotherapeutic agent, is attached. And we do inject these particles into tumor-bearing animals, in this term, in this term uh, rabbits, and we Simultaneously, in parallel, we do place also an external magnetic field. The reason for this is to concentrate the particle and the respective chemotherapeutic agent in the tumor region. As I mentioned before, we do synthesize the nanoparticles. Here you see the raw nanoparticles, here coated with fatty acids. In their TEM investigation, where the mitosendron is on the surface of these particles, and we did perform these studies on tumor-bearing animals. There you see on the hind limb, we do place a YX2 squamous cell carcinoma. It's a very malignant, aggressive tumor. And after, for example, two to three weeks, uh, this tumor after implantation has a size of about um, two to three centimeters, and therapy is necessary. What we are doing, as I mentioned before, we do canalize the artery which is supplying, the main artery which is supplying the tumor and are placing simultaneously an external magnetic field on the tumor region. And I would like to show you some sort of evolution, what we did. Professor Parak uh, was talking about nanoparticles. I did research at the Technical University. I was stood there uh, with his father, and I did start there in 1996. And when I did start there as a one-man show, uh, I did uh, make a cooperation with him. And what we did is we want to investigate the biodistribution of the nanoparticles after injection. 
And in this pilot studies published in 2003, what did we see there? If you do inject nanoparticles, radioactive nanoparticles, iron-59, and place an external magnetic field on the tumor, what we have then, what is uh, the, the results? The results are that you have in the tumor, in the peritumular region, 30 or 200 um, percent more particles concentrated than without external magnetic field. This was a pilot study in three animals. And then we did another pilot study where we did show what happened with the chemotherapeutic agent attached to the particles. And we'd like to focus your attention to the three bars here, the red and the blue bar. If we do inject only 20 or 50 percent of the regular systemic dose bind to the nanoparticles with an exotic magnetic field, we can reach about 35 to 50 percent detectable uh, chemotherapeutic agent in the tumor region. The tumor region meant as a tumor plus minus one, one centimeter. And if you do inject 100 percent of the regular systemic dose with the green bar, the regular application, you will receive less than one percent of the applied chemotherapeutic agent in the tumor. That's the reason why patients receive only the amount of chemotherapeutic agent they do tolerate and not the amount probably they will, use, they will have to uh, be applied to make a sufficient treatment due to the adverse side effects caused to the, nanopart uh, to, to the chemotherapeutic agent. And now we have now made uh, a huge study in 29 tumor-bearing animals, now uh, in press in nanomedicine. What did we do here? You see here in the first column, we did apply regular systemic chemotherapeutic uh, application of mitocentron 100% intravenously in eight animals. And what do you see? We did sacrifice the animal 24 hours after application. You see in the tumor, this is a brown color here, you have less than 1% of the chemotherapeutic agent concentrated there. Most of the chemotherapeutic agent is concentrated in liver and kidney. If you do then applicate intravenously 10% of the regular systemic dose of mitocentron coupled to iron oxide nanoparticles, you have approximately the same picture, less than 1% of the chemotherapeutic agent in the tumor and a lot of uh, chemotherapeutic agent in the liver and in the kidneys. If you do then give 10% of the regular systemic dose bind to nanoparticles with an external magnetic field applicated intravenously, you have also approximately the same picture, less than 1% in the tumor, and um, most of the chemotherapeutic agent is in the liver and in the kidneys. And then our application, if you give 10% of the regular systemic dose bound to nanoparticles and placing a parallel and magnetic field given intraarterially, you have about 52% of, of the chemotherapeutic agent applied in the tumor region. So you need, first of all, the nanoparticles and the external magnetic field, and, and this is the case here, the application via intraarterial application, so then you have a very high concentration in the tumor region. There, correspondingly, the detection of the nanoparticles is correspondingly to the chemotherapeutic agent. Besides that, as I mentioned before, I showed this in the several other meetings here and papers that we did uh, receive um, with our application um, complete tumor remissions in animals without negative side effects, and therefore we did uh, investigate in the pilot study now the immune system. And what we did is, I would like to focus your attention here to the red um, sign. If we do apply 100% regular systemic dose of mertosendron here in four animals, you do have here, if you do investigate um, granulocytes, lymphocytes, and monocytes, you see here after the application a very high concentration load of mertosendron in granulocytes, lymphocytes, and monocytes. And if you are applying our application here, the blue bar, 10% of the regular systemic dose intraarterially, you do have much lower, significant lower load of mitocentron in granulocytes, lymphocytes, and monocytes. And this is, um, in this pilot study, the proof that we do spare with our application um, the immune system of the treated animals. 
Now it's very important to see now, due to the fact that we have this angiography in our lab, to see a follow-up after the application in, for example, here one tumor-bearing animal. Here you see the hind limb in, rab in the rabbit suffering from a, a squamous cell carcinoma. Four days after, you see approximately no big changes. After one only application of, of less than 10% of regular systemic MTO dose, and after three weeks, you have a 93% volume reduction, and after eight weeks, you have a complete tumor reduction without any negative side effects. We did this now also in a, a big animal study with 38 tumor bearing animals. What did they receive? They received 5 or 10% of the regular systemic dose in comparing to the regular systemic MTO dose. And what did we see? We received in these animals, in 27% of the cases, after one application, complete and permanent tumor remission. The animals were in observation about 14 months now in our lab, and so um, it was 27% we had with, after one application. Due to the fact that the tumor is a very complex um, organism, um, do you see here that we have tumors placed in four animals in the hind limb. It was done by the same researcher in the same amount of tumor. And if you see here, uh, you, you, we did place the same amount of tumor material, and you do have a totally different pattern in all four animals. So the reason for this is that if we do want to be successful in our application mode, we have to have nanoparticles, of course, which do function very well. But on the other side, we have to be aware in advance before treatment uh, concerning the vascular system and the tumor size of the tumor. As I mentioned before, we are doing the synthesis, now GNP production. We're doing in vitro, ex vivo, and in vivo experiments in animals. This is our intervention theater, where normally um, patients are living, uh, lying there, but this is only for our um, study in our laboratory. Hopefully, we'll have in the near future the possibility then to do also human trials. And, um, we do follow in our research unit magnetic drug targeting. We will combine this also with hypothermia. This is a, a new project now. Or we will bind this, combine this also with radiotherapy. Molecular targeting, of course, will also be one focus. We do have a close cooperation in our clinics, since I'm a physician, and do 50% clinics, 50% research. We, are, we do have here a network in the clinic, within the clinic, and also within the university. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope I could show you that with magnetic drug targeting and the approach we do use, we can make efficient local chemotherapy and we can spare the immune system. Imaging guided is very necessary and it's obligatory. And um, yeah, it is magnetic drug targeting, I think, from my standpoint of view, is, has a high medical and economic potential, of course. And um, I think due to our infrastructure we do have here, built up that this is an important step towards a targeted and focused personalized therapy in tumor patients. And of course, I would like to thank um, the investors, the foundation, for, uh, the foundation, the Ezekrin of Foundation, the German Research Foundation, and, and the Bavarian Ministry for Environment and Health, and of course, my research team, because without my research team, I couldn't do the work. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot for this nice presentation. Are there questions? Please. Yes, thank you very much for the nice presentation. I have one uh, question concerning the drug release. So you showed uh, in one time the biodistribution of the drug and the biodistribution of the magnetic particles are quite similar. Do you have any data how fast does the drug come off uh, of the particle? Or is basically the reason that uh, there's a big localization is that the particles are trapped as fast, basically it's a tumor site, and then the drug comes off? Come, comes off. Actually, uh, it's a matter, we, we found out that uh, drug release is a matter of pH uh, in the tumor because the pH in the tumor is much lower than normal. The physical uh, pH, it's about six around this. And we found out that this is um, uh, depending on this, on this pH is one factor. On the other side, you are right. Due to the fact that we can localize the particles, um, we can do both. And um, therefore, I think, um, yeah, uh, clear, Desorption from the nanoparticles is not necessary in this case. 
for, for me as a physician. But you are right, due to the fact that uh, we, we did investigate, there is a pH-depending drug release of mitosendron from the particle. Open questions yeah. left. There. Yeah, uh, have you, what is the force on the nanoparticles uh, elicited by the magnetic field? Has any of your collaborators done any um, theory or modeling? And I was wondering whether you could even measure that in, say, a metrogel or even a mammosphere, uh, just to get some idea about the penetration that you might get into tumor tissue. Actually, first of all, I did uh, mention here the concentration due to biodistribution reason. And we did, uh, of course, um, investigate what, will, what happened with the nanoparticles. And we could uh, see or demonstrate that the mechanism of uh, uptake in tumor cells, which is uh, proven, is endocytosis. So we could prove this. Yeah, I'm not worried about the endocytosis. I'm worried about the penetration into the tumor tissue from the bloodstream yeah, using uh, the magnetic. Yeah, the, the normal pores of um, normal um, vessels is about one, two, three or five uh, nanometers. And you do have uh, in tumor vessels um, much bigger pores. So we have about five to 600 nanometers. And we could demonstrate there that uh, the particles do leave. The vascular did not show the hysterical investigation did it last time. Uh, can penetrate uh, especially tumor vascular into tumor tissue. They, 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 can, they can penetrate force by the magnetic... Uh, yeah, yeah, um, penetration into the tissue. Into, into the, the into tissue. The, but into, how far into the interstitial tissue? Just... Um, yeah. Um, I, I understand uh, they can get across the endothelial layer. It's the penetration into the tissue. I'm just and interested. It's uh, due to the fact that this is a superficial tumor and you place a magnetic field over the, over the tumor. The particles do follow the magnetic field strands and so they can penetrate the whole interstitial the, the whole tumor interstitial following the magnetic field strands. So we, we could, I did show this in historical investigations. Okay, one last question, please. Can I ask uh, the, the iron uh, nanoparticle you mentioned has the anti-oxidation property? <coughs> because um, what I have done some iron uh, nanoparticles, I do did some coating outside, otherwise it will have this yeah. problem. There is some antioxidation um, um, properties of the iron oxide nanoparticles, of course, but due to the fact that we do um, only in, um, inject very low concentration of iron oxide nanoparticles, this is not, uh, I think, that, uh, that I think we, we did not see any uh, big adverse side effects due to this uh, antioxidative process. Okay, I think uh, we have a rush outside of the audience, uh, so we should close the session. I would like to thank again uh, all the speakers and the audience, so thank you.